For years, the United States Air Force has been attempting to phase out the older Reaper drones to free up funds for the more advanced unmanned aerial systems that are currently available to the service. The U.S. Congress, however, has repeatedly turned down the service's petitions. The service suggested giving Ukrainian forces access to its older Reaper drones a month after Russia seized Ukraine in February. However, given that some drones will almost probably be shot down, there have been worries that the delicate technology of these aircraft could end up in Russian hands. For instance, when the conflict shifted to the eastern Donbas region, which was well defended by Russian air defenses, the Turkish-made Bayraktar drones, which had been crucial in destroying Russian armored columns, and troops marching toward the Ukrainian capital Kyiv, began to lose their effectiveness. According to four unidentified officials with an understanding of the situation who were cited by Politico, these worries have led to a months-long impasse between the Pentagon and the U.S. Air Force. The MQ-9 Reaper and the MQ-1C Gray Eagle, both operated by the U.S. Army, have been key priorities for Ukraine. Both of these drones have long-range surveillance and striking capacity, which is crucial for Ukrainian forces as they advance on the heavily fortified Russian front lines in Donbas and the Kherson area along the eastern bank of the Dnipro River, while promising to use the donated drones to only attack Russian positions inside Ukraine and to share targeting information with the U.S. before launching strikes. The Ukrainians, who have been requesting long-range weapons from Washington for months, are reportedly frustrated by the Pentagon's indecision. However, since other controversial systems, like the HIMARS Multiple Launch Rocket System MLRS, have been approved after Ukraine promised to deploy them only against targets inside its borders, the major worries are about the sensitive technology inside these drones being stolen and not so much about an escalation. The Pentagon and General Atomics, the company that makes these two drones, are attempting to make one or both drones transportable to Ukraine, so the use of drones is still an option. Executives from General Atomics have been in contact with Ukrainian authorities for months to reach an agreement on technology transfers that would adhere to U.S. regulations and concerns. Additionally, the U.S. is thinking of supplying Gray Eagle drones. To prevent Russian spies from discovering American technological secrets, the U.S. is considering giving Ukraine a less advanced model of its cutting-edge Gray Eagle MQ-1C aircraft. According to reports, the U.S. Army is in charge of looking into how to modify the Gray Eagle drones so that even if some of them are lost, there is less risk of leaking critical technology potentially increasing the likelihood that Ukraine will receive them. While the sensitive technology aboard the Gray Eagle is yet unknown, analysts speculate that it most likely has to do with the image and intelligence gathering capabilities and sensors. Also, the multi-spectral targeting system on the Gray Eagle drone, produced by Raytheon Technologies, is causing the Pentagon anxiety. This electro-infrared ball offers its users real-time targeting, intelligence, and tracking. U.S. lawmakers are pleading with the Biden administration to send drones to Ukraine. These American politicians are putting pressure on the U.S. government to supply Ukraine with MQ-9 Reaper and Gray Eagle drones. The USAF initially gave its approval for the MQ-9s to be sent to Ukraine, according to Republican Congressman Kenneth Stanton Calvert of California, who is also the top member of the House Appropriations Defense Subcommittee and whose district includes the headquarters of General Atomics. The government, however, has not bought into the concept. In an interview, Calvert claimed, we ought to be able to bring in the MQ-9 Reaper and Gray Eagles that would help shift the trajectory of this conflict. The Biden administration should begin preparing the Ukrainian troops to utilize the Reapers and Gray Eagles before making a choice, according to Calvert because it may take three to four months to train new operators after a decision is made to dispatch the drones. In addition, a bipartisan group of 16 senators, led by Republicans Joe Manchin of West Virginia and Democrat Joni Ernst of Iowa, encouraged U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin in a letter dated November 22 to respond to some inquiries regarding the transfer of the Gray Eagle because the drone is Ukraine's highest priority military transfer request.
Jomi clashed in front of the public with Christine Wormuth, the Secretary of the U.S. Army, when she voiced doubts about the Gray Eagle's capacity to survive in contested airspace. Joni downplayed similar worries on the same panel and didn't appear particularly concerned about the transfer of sensitive technology. We can target the S-300 if they're using it to shoot down a Gray Eagle. With technology that is already in use in 30 other countries, we can outfit a Gray Eagle, Joni added. The senator from Iowa made a connection between the drone problem and the Biden administration's decision to deny Ukraine access to long-range weapons that could penetrate deep inside Russia. We ought to be beating the bloody hell out of the Russians through the Ukrainians so they can't raise their heads and return in five to ten years. Understanding how the MQ-9 works are crucial because drones are frequently characterized as turning killing into a video game. However, that is not a true analogy. In terms of pure ergonomics, modern gaming controllers are neither as complex nor as sensitive as the controls of an MQ-9 Reaper drone. After 9-11, the MQ-1 Predator, on which the MQ-9 Reaper is based, was hurriedly put into service, and standard military aircraft testing and development were not carried out due to time restraints. Because of this, the controls weren't created to be as user-friendly as they would be in the Reaper's successors. The MQ-9, however, is a component of a system that assists strike aircraft and ground commanders by locating and tracking dynamic targets or other helpful intelligence in its secondary duty as an ISR asset. Additionally, it is capable of assisting a broad range of missions, including border and coastal surveillance, tracking of weapons, enforcing embargoes, disaster relief, support for peacekeeping, and counter-narcotic operations. The RPA can collect and transmit real-time imagery data to ground users 24-7 and out of the line of sight using satellite communication links. The remotely piloted aircraft can be disassembled and transported around the world in a single container. The C-130 Hercules or another bigger aircraft can carry the full equipment. With a clear line of sight to the ground data terminal antenna, which offers line of sight communications for takeoff and landing, the MQ-9 aircraft can operate from typical US airfields. All right, guys, that wraps up our video for today. What do you think about the deployment of US MQ-9 Reapers drones in the Russian-Ukraine war? Let us know in the comment section. Also, do well to give this video thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more.